the Puerto Rican Jutia was a vital food source for the Amerindians for many years. With being hunted by Arawak Indians, they continued to survive until the arrival of early European explorers. Christopher Columbus and his crew are believed to have eaten the species upon their arrival. The species declined following European colonization of the West Indies. It is unclear whether it survived after facing threats from the early introduction of black rats by the first European settlers around 1500. St. Helena petrel was endemic to the island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean and it most likely became extinct after overpredation by people. Paleopropithecus is a recently extinct genus of large sloth lemurs from Madagascar related to living lemur species found there today. Radiocarbon dates indicate that they may have survived until around 1620. It likely had a very active behavior based on the morphology of the limbs. It engaged in hanging upside down from all four limbs in a sloth-like posture at a high frequency, as indicated by the morphology of the lumbar vertebrae and the high degree of phalangeal curvature. It is regarded as being among the most suspensory clades of mammals ever to evolve. When it became extinct is not exactly clear, however scientists have suggested that it could be as recent as about 500 years ago. The reason behind the extinction of the several species of Paleopropithecus has been attributed to the presence of humans to the island of Madagascar. Along with being relatively large, these lemurs became targets because they were active during the day as were humans. Along with their diurnal nature, another factor that led to their extinction was a slow reproductive rate. They were killed faster than they could reproduce. The aurochs were one of the largest herbivores in post-glacial Europe, comparable to the European bison. They formed herds for at least a part of the year. These probably did not number much more than 30. If aurochs had social behavior similar to their descendants, social status was gained through displays and fights, in which cows engaged as well as bulls. Indeed, aurochs bulls were reported to often have had severe fights. In Poland, the right to hunt large animals on any land was restricted first to nobles, and then gradually, to only the royal households. As the population of aurochs declined, hunting ceased altogether. The Polish royal family used gamekeepers to provide open fields for grazing for the aurochs, exempting them from local taxes in exchange for their service. Poaching aurochs was made a crime punishable by death. According to a Polish royal survey in 1564, the gamekeepers knew of 38 animals. The last recorded live aurochs, a female, died in 1627 in the Jaktoro Forest, Poland, from natural causes. The causes of extinction were unrestricted hunting, a narrowing of habitat due to the development of farming, and diseases transmitted by domesticated cattle. While all the wild subspecies are extinct, Bos primigenius lives on in domesticated cattle, and attempts are being made to breed similar types suitable for filling the extinct subspecies role in the former ecosystem. The behavior of the Mauritius giant skink is not well known or documented by any travelers to Mauritius when it was extant, however many things such as its diet and other aspects of its behavior can most likely be determined by extant skink species. 
it is very likely that it shared behavioral traits with many other ground-based skinks. Its temperament was most likely very similar to that of modern ground skinks and was most likely a very tame animal that had relatively no fear of humans which might have played a part in its extinction. The first recorded mention of the dodo was by Dutch sailors in 1598. In the following years, the bird was hunted by sailors and invasive species, while its habitat was being destroyed. The last widely accepted sighting of a dodo was in 1662. Its extinction was not immediately noticed, and some considered it to be a mythical creature. In the 19th century, research was conducted on a small quantity of remains of four specimens that had been brought to Europe in the early 17th century. Among these is a dried head, the only soft tissue of the dodo that remains today. Since then, a large amount of subfossil material has been collected on Mauritius, mostly from the Mare Oxanga swamp. The extinction of the dodo within less than a century of its discovery called attention to the previously unrecognized problem of human involvement in the disappearance of entire species. The dodo achieved widespread recognition from its role in the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland, and it has since become a fixture in popular culture, often as a symbol of extinction and obsolescence. The dodo's appearance in life is evidenced only by drawings, paintings, and written accounts from the 17th century. As these vary considerably, and only some of the illustrations are known to have been drawn from live specimens, its exact appearance in life remains unresolved, and little is known about its behavior. Though the dodo has historically been considered fat and clumsy, it is now thought to have been well adapted for its ecosystem. It is presumed that the dodo became flightless because of the ready availability of abundant food sources and a relative absence of predators on Mauritius. The broad-billed parrot's head was large in proportion to its body, and there was a distinct crest of feathers on the front of the head. The bird had a very large beak which would have enabled it to crack hard seeds. Subfossil bones indicate that the species exhibited greater sexual dimorphism in overall size and head size than any living parrot. The exact coloration is unknown, but a contemporary description indicates that it had multiple colors, including a blue head, and perhaps a red body and beak. It is believed to have been a weak flyer, but not flightless. Because of its poor flying ability, large size and possible island tameness, the broad-billed parrot was easy prey for sailors who visited Mauritius, and their nests would have been extremely vulnerable to predation by introduced crab-eating macaques and rats. Various sources indicate the bird was aggressive, which may explain why it held out so long against introduced animals after all. Like its Réunion relative, the Mauritius shell goose was rapidly hunted to extinction. Still reasonably plentiful in 1681, the population collapsed soon afterwards and was found, wild geese, to be, already rare, in 1693. In 1698, Governor Deodati declared it to be extinct. 